left open. So for TSA to go towards that one, we have seen Hecarim typically does go over to the red side. Not a lot of teams just outright first pick it on blue. For Top Esports, they've been putting such a heavy priority on this Jinx. They will just lock it through. I would be sad if I'm an audience member. I come through and I'm like, Doggo didn't have a, a, a great time last game. Remember, guys, he got camped, so it's not really his fault. Um, being Doggo for game three, everyone's like, ah, oh, this time we'll get Uzi again. Not only just that. just adding, adding fuel to the fire, my friend. I am. With Renata gone as well, like, I better see that Ramus coming through. I want something spicy <laughs> here in this game. Because, look, oh. you know, Trundle again, Lyric, let's be real, uh, might be another hey, good opportunity. It, if Karsa was still here, the, the Skarner, right? Bringing yeah. that up the other day. But, nope, right now, they are just going to go back to the Trundle. Uh, they did get a lot of value in terms of, like, the pillar that he was able to ride in the last game. Again, zoning BLG off from some of the instances where they were trying to find a fight. You're buying space for Jackie Love on the pick as well. So, you know, fine into the Zin is Rise also coming through this time around. So, TS, once again, going towards something that does have the ability to move around the map. Uh, we hit on how... Right, we knew Corky Presence would fall once we finally did jump from 12.2 now to 12.4, but overall we'd already started to see Corky Presence die down a little bit, and Victor as well had started to see yep. his uh, time in the spotlight kind of come to a bit of a conclusion. BLG, though, still fine going with some of these scaling options, does quite well in the isolated 1v1 with the range that you're able to put off against the Rise. You have a ball carrier there in Weiwei for BLG. Kind of changing direction now to moving to more of this 5v5 style in terms of last time around, right? It was about the side lane picks they were able to come out with Trindamir in game one and with Ari and Nar in game two. Last time around, you speak of Ari, uh, we've seen picks like Rise that were banned away in game number two when BLG decided to pick that Ari up as, as a response. This time around, BLG are like, well, okay, we get ourselves the Ariana, we get something that's a safe laning, and we start taking away some of the supports. Tom Kench, Rakan, both the. Uh, but teams looking like they want to pinch this pool, and even the Thresh going away in the end. Oh, Lyric, Nautilus, like Leona, so much still available. Yeah, now for TS, I would assume you, you don't want to ban either of those, right? Because then you are just giving one over for free to yep. the opposite side, to where you yourselves are having to go deeper into the pool to, you know, maybe an Alistar, uh, you know, Rel, that so many other, the, the kind of tier two options in terms of engaged supports. For BLG right now, hovering onto the Leona. Just again, another ball carrier. Uh, we've seen Chris have some amazing performances on this one so far. Does potentially give more targets for TN to look to use that subjugate on though and, and you know get those tank stats from. That's also true. I just saw a fan holding up a sign though saying China's number one support is Crisp. Um, Hung would like a word with you. But Chris definitely gone. has uh, an argument for maybe the, the most, most beautiful League of Legends player to ever exist. Ooh, I think the Shy wants a word with you on that one, my dude. Not but only... Crisp, Crisp has the edgy fringe. But, and, and I love and it. And then Icon has cool tats and look, look, the edgy fringe. Icon, no. Icon is the most supermodel-like, but Crisp's like very obvious indifference to everything around him is a sight to see but back to picks and bands we have the graves coming out for wayward as once again breathe goes towards this fiora we hit on this in an earlier draft that breathe has been one of the players just so confident going towards this uh everett's always gonna remember his breakout highlight play when he was known as curse on this pick able to outplay and then yeah, get away from enemy jungle right now sitting three and zero on fiora this season nine oh, yeah. kda has been absolutely huge so now for blg still opting in terms of being able to, to bring that side lane pressure out but much stronger i i think 5v5 team fight comp coming out from them this time around with two hyper carries sitting in mid and ad and then a pretty nice front line okay lyric i see fiora i click like um that's all that's all from me i think when international fans sit here and wait for this game through to start they see a fiora coming from you know china region and they think man Chinese Fiora is going to hit different. Uh, we have a lot of great Fiora players. We have Bin, we have Curse, or, you know, now known as, uh, as Breathe, um, up in top lane. I think Ala is is also like an OG Fiora player. I'm kind of realizing that we have a lot of top laners who have this in their pool. Yeah, a, a lot of top... We just have a lot of players who are willing to opt into these side lane strategies or even just come out with a more advantageous or comfortable lane matchup in their favor 
Also going to be cool to see his itemization this game, right? Uh, okay. From what we haven't seen before, like a lot of viewers were willing to go towards Divine Center, but we did have some, you know, Gore Drinker into Sterex games. In Solo Queue, it has been a lot more of either the Stride Breaker build or going for a Hull Breaker yourself. So, I need to see what Breed's take is on his Fiora build on 12.4. I'm down for it. We run into game number three and Breed on this Fiora. What we're going to be talking about here, it's a grasp for the rune choice while Wayward goes fleet. Uh, lethal Tempo Zin Zhao from Wei Wei Lyric. So we've seen uh, quite a lot of Conqueror, but I think we've seen this hero there. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've definitely seen, you know, certain matchups where Zin Zhao takes this. Uh, I think it does enable you a little bit more in terms of, like, early game uh, trading or skirmishing as compared to the Conqueror, getting that one stacked up. Obviously giving you a ton more damage and sustain in team fights. But going to see what Wei Wei wants to opt into early on here. For the side of TS, though, having the rise means they should be the ones looking for more proactive map plays yep. early on. You would expect it potentially to go towards his top side, shut down this Fiora, get your Graves ahead to become an absolute monster while in the bot lane. Uh, I'm sure Jackie Love Mark will still be looking for the, the 2v2 kills, as we've seen. But Doggo and Chris, if they aren't getting as heavily focused, I think should be able to have a much better time uh, around, just like they did in Game 1. True. Not game two. We don't want them to have the game two experience. Doggo and Chris dove repeatedly. Oh, war diff. Well, Jackie Love and Mark, they're going to be uh, a little bit closer to level two here, Lyric. So, in the 2v2, a nice little setup. Uh, people kind of forget that wards give experience in the game, and it's something that will actually, surprisingly, make a difference. Yeah, especially with the fact that. BLG not wanting to opt into any type of hard push. I mean, they know up against the other side, right? Especially the Jinx able to control the wave at a whim with those rockets. And I expect the first few levels to, to not uh, go by too quickly, right? Tien, I expect him to just prioritize his own clear. He always could opt into some kind of gank mid and just look to burn a flash from Fofo with uh, the pillar coming out. But I think not too many opportunities set up in either of your other side lanes uh, just yet. We toggle to top side. Wayward's already hit level two, though, and Breathe is now one half HP. Uh, remember, Grasp, so he has a bit of sustain, but Wayward, you can say the same thing. Now, Tien, you mentioned, try and toggle the Flash nice and early. He's running in. Bofo, the pill is going to come through, and there it is. Lyric, you're a godsend. It's just always nice to see these types of plays come out, right? I feel like a lot of times you don't see uh, players look for level 2 or level 3 ganks just because it can be such a waste of time if you end up misplaying it or if the gank isn't really there like you think it is because the enemy laners playing neutral or a bit above but still are within their safe zone but Tien did go for it Vova was playing very far forward and now gonna have to respect uh, potential repeat ganks coming out from Tien which again should open up even more windows for Knight to be able to look to move from this mid lane we're now on the bottom side spotted out by a ward and that's the enemy jungler on the other side you can see that ward going to give a lot of information to Top Esports bottom lane as they continue pushing up. Tien doing the same though. He doesn't even want the scuttle. Lyric, he's going straight for Weiwei. He wants to duel this man. And as he runs over, look at this. Hey, have you got smite? <laughs> no, you <laughs> And don't. he gets it. Yeah, that's easy done. Let me get the scuttle as well. Tien into the lead. And now look at the top side as well. Wayward hovering down towards uh, the river. He's going to be taking the top side scuttle as well. So it's not only doing away camp, denying both scuttle. Actually, no, Wayward. They're just wrapping around for this mid lane. We're getting that TN that's so proactive in the early game. The one you talked about at the start. Fofo with no summoner to get out of this. The dive available. It's first blood over to Way with that top esports movement lyric. That's clean. And it also goes to what you're hitting on about Wayward for the past few weeks. That Wayward has shown a much uh, higher willingness to roam than we ever saw from 369. Yep. Ching Tian, I think, was a little bit on the same page as well, but did struggle, struggle quite heavily a lot in terms of his laning phase. Wayward, I think, definitely being one of the more complete top laners we've seen on the top esports roster over their past few iterations. Zoom should obviously fit that that role perfectly, but just has not been able to find his form as Crisp and Weiwei. Yeah. It's going to be hovering. They need to be careful, though, because with Mark and Jackie Love coming from base, if they did opt into an aggressive skirmish, <laughs> it's knows. very easy for their bot lane to get here. He knows. He knows. That's too sus. That's too sus. We know that bottom lane is missing completely. Pings are going down. Tien even taking the long path around the Krugs. And BLG are not going to get their wish lyric. No bait. Uh, no waiting here for top esports. So Tien, as he continues to farm across, they go back. And after that first blood, that clean dive in the mid lane, all I can say is top esports, not only a thousand gold ahead, but you can see the jungle camp difference right now for Tien's huge. And 
Wayward keeping up with CS up in the top side. He picked up first blood as well, which seems to be a big deal. Yeah, him going to be able to have even more sustain in that laning phase will be quite nice. Especially as Free tries to weave in just little pokes at him in terms of those vitals or, you know, looking for a grass proc to get a bit of damage down. So Wayward going to have a little bit more. Breathe, though, especially as he gets to level 6, right? Going to definitely flip to Breathe, looking for a lot of these all-ins. Does have the Sheen now as well. So going to get a nice bit of damage from those Spellblade procs. Lyric, I'm down about how we continue abusing mid. Now, I don't like bullying. However, when you see it done so cleanly, sometimes you got to respect it. Fofo doesn't have flash available for another couple of minutes. And as the pressure mounts... I think mounts, it would be quite hard, though. So tell me what. Diving mid? Right, I mean, diving mid, you have access from both sides of the map to look to come and cover for the side of BLG. Especially if you don't have information on where Weiwei is. If you know where Weiwei is, I think it is doable, especially with their side lanes pushing. But uh, as long as BLG, if BLG don't overcommit to any aggressive plays, you could open yourself up to overextending in that mid lane, especially now that Shock waves up. He buys time for more members to collapse, and then you you opt into just throwing it away. I remember, I think it was V5 versus LGD, or V5 go for a dive in mid, and that's exactly oh, what happens. Yeah. Able to, to buy time, the other members of LGD are able to get there, and they find a few kills on V5, which brings the game back to the side of LGD. They, they ended up winning that game. Well, I'll keep that the in Sejuani mind. The Sejuani game. Yeah, I remember. I remember, there was a, a couple of questions about that. Uh, you were talking about ultimates here for Bofo and how that reinforces the ability to maybe not dive for top esports. But the other ult I'm interested in is Knight. Knight has the Realm Warp. He's moving down. Weiwei shadowing this, but with a dredge line coming through, here comes Knight right on the spot. They're targeting Crisp, and he has nowhere to go. As Crisp re-engages, it's a kill. Over to the mid lane of TES. Two on the board. Dragon right there. Everything going well in this early game for top baseball. And they took it slow and steady, right? They, they waited for the wave to be at a neutral point. They know that Knight still has pressure. You hit on the, the flash being down. But even at this point in the game, right? Knight just having a solid amount of wave clear to get that wave in fast and be able to find the plays. Will miss out on some minions for the play he just made in mid. But still, the fact that they were able to find a, a lead overall, I feel like, is a positive sign for top esports. Especially when Rift Herald is coming up in 30 seconds and Wayward has been able to maintain push in the top side. So should open up for top esports to be the team to look for this objective. He's backing away for now. He will have to walk back up. That collateral damage not going to be available at the very least. Chris spotted out on his roam up towards top side. And Control Ward taken through his troubles on the way through. Uh, you can see that Knight's even got the push out through mid too. So Fofo just has to stick around near his turret for the time being. And like we've got a dragon to trade off as well. So he's going to be walking away with at least something it feels like. And Lyric, Herald spawns. Uh, I'm looking at items. Nothing fully completed yet, but I think Knight's strong enough here for a rise. Jackalov in a decent position as this Jinx as well. Yeah, we see the carries right now staying on bot side. TES are able to force the river first if they wanted from the fact that Wayward did get to lane first, but opted not to. Seems like they are handing over blue tonight to start things off with Knight. Still doesn't have flash. It will be up soon. So they still need to be a little bit careful. Fofos has come back up. Doggo making the first move, though. Excuse me, it's actually Jackalove is already there. Doggo's a bit behind. Tien starting the Herald. And you can see that Weiwei in a comfortable position. Weiwei now moving. The top eSports, they're not going to have their reinforcements in River. So Tien looks like he's playing this pretty close. Oh, we see the Weiwei walking around. Might just have a crisp to get picked off. It was there, though. Remember, Shockwave is available onto the jungler. They want Tien. Smite comes through, but it doesn't help him out. Jungler dead for top eSports. BLG swoop in. Take it. And that's why it was so risky for TES. Yeah, I guess it didn't matter that Weiwei was wrapping around because the blast uh, cone was available. Blast over the wall. Looks like Chris Ooh. maybe picked off. They're going to re-engage. Shockwave is now down. They've got the pick on the Chris once again. Jack love the ulti. It explodes with the AoE. Look, Wayward on the flank into a Manalus on Rihanna. And it's Inzao who burns his flash. Getting excited. <laughs> TES just won that when what? they lost their jungle. What? I don't know if Doggo assumed he'd be able to blow everyone up, but I feel like that is way too overambitious of a thought to flash forward into multiple members of the enemy team. He killed Mark, but so what? We're going to go straight into the replay here. I mean, TS think they've caught Chris off guard, which it looked like they had, right? Way were able to move her first, but the blast cone, I think making such a big difference. Way, way being able to get involved in this fight. They take him down. And then I love this from TS. Like, knowing that they have the damage to be able to find this pig, because honestly, looking at this, I thought that this would just be a straight-up int from the side of top esports. They find it, 
able to get the rocket from the fact that it does hit Bopo. And then here, Doggo okay. flashing in. Moonlight Vigil had already just come out. I mean, you know, hoping to get, I assume, maybe more range. Chalk comes off faster, but <laughs> there's no there's no world where you don't die from doing that. There's no world. Yeah. Well, like uh, like Jackie Love, like Doggo, I guess. That's a very Jackie Love play. Let's be real. So many times where he's made that play, and I feel like the Doggo, uh, the last couple of games have been a bit sketchy. This dragon comes down to come back in. Look at BLG. Walking into a potential trap. Mark wants the dredge line once again. So without that summoner available. As we start the fight onto Chris, the shockwave comes through. It's only up to the end. He flashes away as Doggo this time. Ain't buying the space, but Jackie Love gets excited. Realm Warp as he fronts it, and everyone else jumps on in. Doggo this time, he doesn't have to flash because the whole cavalry's there waiting. Fofo with a nice flash himself. But Jackie Love, 5 0 to his grand challenge up on the top side. Collateral damage already used. Wait, what's out of there? And baby, I see big bad world champion Eddie Carey. <laughs> yeah, Jackie Love, absolutely huge after that fight. Like, silver lining, good job to BLG from being for being able to make it so close. Popo, you know, getting that last kill in the end, making it so it only went one up in favor of Top Esports. But TS instantly turned on to Crisp here. We see the Chompers come down. Doggo not being able to walk forward. Popo actually does get caught out. A solid amount of damage comes off onto Crisp and the Super Mega Death Rocket able to finish. And at this point, right, they are in a 3v4. Uh, Doggo doing a nice amount of damage from the fact that he does have Infernum available. And then Knight not able to get away. Fofo flashing over the wall to finish that one off. Uh, maybe hoping as well he could try and get away from Jackie Love. Jackie Love, of course, excited. Would be really no way for him to do that as Jackie Love now. Kraken Slayer also having the Crit Cloak in his inventory as well as Tier 2 Boots. Yeah. He's going to get bigger from here, right? We've got bottom lane turret that's right for the taking because BLG are committing everything topside. Wayward can't get out. Solar Flare dead in the middle. And with the chain CC, this Graves is just trying to pick his target. It goes to breathe, which is very good for BLG. As with the Herald Lyric, this is going to be their trade while they know that Jackie Love's getting busy with the bottom lane turret. And overall, I think it was the right choice. Uh, you know you're going to lose out in terms of skirmishing in bot lane, whether it's 2v2 or 3v3. So you're like, hey, let's send Chris Pomp. Guarantee that we have numbers here to do this. You're either going to find the kill or just be able to zone him off to it to be able to get the triple charge. <laughs> Hello, what's actually happening here? Doggo laughing, though. And remember when he flushed into three people? Well, three people just decided to go into him. Hysterics, remember when I told you why? You know, I'm not a huge fan of, like, using mid lane turret dives very liberally yeah. and the impact it could have well we saw it right there we didn't get to see how it started off but uh <laughs> we were just highlighting man massive advantage for jackie love now doggo sitting at six two and one out of nowhere thank you top esports doggo apparently your best friend appreciates it that's karma dude they had to they had to give him back what he gave to them uh, we're going to see here how the dive starts off. Gale forcing right away to get out. Shockwave. Bofo, yeah, able to get a, to get a nice shockwave off, but still, I mean, you're committing really with no wave. Crisp getting here actually doesn't even really mean too much in the end. Also set up for a very telegraphed, easy-to-hit Moonlight Vigil coming out from Doggo. Well, sometimes you just like to throw it away, he's there. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Hey, a run away from Jackie Love. Doggo feeling confident now. He's gone towards the LDR, but Jackie Love is still Jackie Love with the deal. And close to get himself a rapid fire cannon. And Star Plating goes down. Pillar through the mid lane. BLG. Wanna place this. Wanna play this rather close to the chest. I want to point out, Lyric, that this game has suddenly become really easy to cast. Let, let's think about Shockwave, Realm, all that stuff. All that matters is the AD carry. Which AD carry dies first in a fight? There's your answer. Yeah, 100% agree. Around skirmishes, it'll be all about the 80 carries. We do see Breathe now. Starting to get some items under his belt. Divine Center picked up. Looks like he's going to make his way towards Blade of the Rune King second for uh, the ability to punish Wayward even harder in this 1v1. We can see now Wayward's kind of at a point where he's pretty much avoiding that, picking up his Krugs right now and just letting Breathe push in. So our main focus will be 80 carries. Secondary focus, keeping our eyes on top laners and especially what Breathe is able to do on this undefeated Fiora. 145 CS at 14 minutes, almost 15. Wave pushes in. 
Uh, Wayward's starting to get a little bit uncomfortable in the side lane. You can see that Breathe has much sustain as the Graves. Uh, the side lanes continue here. Breathe actually moving up, but second Herald that has spawned. Top East wants to fought over everything, but for now, they're pretty deep behind their own line. So the OG going to get a freebie here and the second Herald of the game, again, belonging to them. Yeah, it looks like TS wanted to try to find a plan to breathe. We saw some pings come out towards that bottom lane when Breathe was still showing, coming out, I assume, from Knight to look for the Realm War. But Breathe respected, backed off while his team was taking Rift Herald. They are going to sacrifice control over Dragon. Not saying they can't fight it, but at least TS do have vision uh, for this one. We can see them now getting some deeper look vision in the enemy jungle. What a fun time it is to be a Jinx in this game. Onto Breathe, Knight's here. We've got side lane threats, but also one from BLG. Look at Bofo. <laughs> Just Look splitting the inner turret as an Oriana. Yeah, and I mean, he doesn't have TP, so it'll be up soon. But to me, it says that BLG would be willing to give over this dragon as top esports are starting that one now with just Tien. BLG have Rift Herald. They should be able to guarantee this mid lane turret. And it looks like Bofo might even be able to get the one in top. Yeah, it's pretty low. Wayward moving down and uh, as the minion wave pushes away. Yep, there's one, there's two. And number three, potentially Lyric at the very least is damage coming from this uh, next charge. But yeah, there it goes. BLG getting collapsed on those 10. Wants something, gets Doggo. Doggo, Kale forces Doggo. in. <laughs> Repositions, but Lyric, he's alive this time and Mark's paying the iron price. Teleport from Knight and with BLG getting hit hard by Wayward who flashes in as well. What is it with carries making the move as Doggo's caught out once again. Knight burning down. He's thinking, but he lives. This game, absolutely bananas. The fact that Doggo's first instinct is to like flash or gale force forward was absolutely insane. Like you said, he doesn't go down. They're actually the ones to find that initial kill. Just really nice on the trigger pull there. They are able to find one in return off the back though for the side of TS. We're gonna see how this one all starts. They try to look for it. Doggo jumping forward on a Jackalove, but instantly Mark coming to his rescue, going forward. Jackalove had some to be able to get away. And with Mark so committed with the flash, he does go down, but, B, but TS don't want to call it quits here. They keep going, wayward specifically flashing forward. Luckily, doesn't get caught by the shockwave. And then to finally finish off the use of all the sums, Knight saying, hey, all of you guys used your flash. I'm going to flash, look for the root, and secure one more kill for ourselves. So fla flash is burnt across the board, except on Crisp and Fofo. Uh, no Baron up just yet, TS trying to posture up for this topside turret, but BLG... But the fact that they have been in control of mid wave means that they can rotate and look to stop the aggression. And the tier one stays up for now. That's the last tier one in the game up and available. Excuse me, there is bot lane up at top esports. Didn't notice that because it was a double turret in the top side, meaning BLG had three turrets to two. But gold's dead even. Gold is like 500 in the lead for BLG, which is nothing with how the action's been going. And we finally get a look at what happened with Knight versus Breathe. Knight teleported to the fight, pretty half-cocked, and you can see that Breathe forced him out in the side lane. The Blade of the Ruin King Fiora Lyric, who's feeling a pretty damn fine at this point in sides. Yeah, and like we highlighted, right, the item was buffed. You get 2% more damage coming out uh, for it, so that will be quite nice, especially as he, we've already been hitting on, right? He's had pressure in the 1v1s at least. Wayward not feeling comfortable uh, walking up and pushing out that wave against him. Wayward also picking up some Grievous Wounds on the opposing side, though. So, paying respect to the fact that he will be laning up against Breathe. And even Weiwei still having that Gore Drinker. Okay, waiting over the wall. Poppy's probably grouping up here. Hang on, the pillar's out. He flashes. Combination. Even Wayward's making his way up. Really nice. And Lyric, it's because they want this tower pretty badly. So as Wayward moves to mid, look at what they're sacrificing for this tier one. Jackalove will get excited and take it away, but... Breathe, look at him. He's gonna have some alone time with this turret. Yeah, four TS committing their top laner towards the top half of the map just in case they were able to find any sort of skirmish. Does open up for Breathe to get this. So overall, still just a one for one trade in, term of, in terms of turrets. Wayward, still not gonna be confident to walk up and look for this. Oh, maybe he is. Maybe I'm totally wrong. He's super confident. I wonder. He's absolutely confident. He's got the rest of the top esports on the way. That's why no one from BLG are nearby. Smoke's going to buy time. Grand challenge. When's it about to come it out? On the way why with was he, he needs the healing. Breathe. Still running. Has the movement speed. And top esports committed the realm warp for that as well. So Breathe pulling a lot of members and my respect. <laughs> and BLG answering on the opposite side. 
We've seen Fofo love side waves. Fofo loves to get as much yes and as much gold onto himself as possible. I assume he's just gonna push this one out right because the fact that you do have two turrets already down in that top lane, uh, not gonna be able to aggress too far forward to get anything meaningful from that. Dracula paying his respect in mid because at any point, Doggo can just scale force forward, look to throw out the Moonlight yeah. Vigil, and try to burst him down. Dracula at any point will also flash forward when he has it available. So both 80 carries. I'm feeling similar wavelength here. Two items apiece. LDR picked up by Doggo. Rapid fire cannon here for Jackie Love. Doggo as much in this game as Jackie Love is. 80 carries need to be looked at in this next one, folks. As we move to 35 seconds away from Dragon. Top Esports, if they get this, they'll move to Soul Point again. And this series really hasn't been defined by Dragons, though, because it doesn't matter if it's been Hextech or a Cloud Soul. Each game, Top Esports have had it, but it hasn't won them the game. No, definitely not. Is now we're going to see Knight, what, still pretty far away, doesn't have Roam Wolf yep. available, and Breathe trying to zone off on this flank. They're not going to let TES walk into River. But do then do they just go, okay, we'll go towards the Baron. Pings were going down. It's 80 carry. Wait, wait. Starting the fight on to Tien, though. Souls are flushed away from. Now that tool's down for Chris. Top Esports confident again. Weiwei getting boosted up. That Shockwave engage is big as Dredge Line comes through. Watch for the Shockwave again. A depth charge used onto Chris on the back line as Doggo starts poking down with Calibrum. But Knight wants to clear the wave, gets the burst down. And Jackie Love is separated from the team. He's near a ward. He'll be spotted oh. out here. Jackie Love needs to be careful. As he walks in, he flashes himself. Top Esports are separated, though, as Jackie needs to get into the fight. But Wayward by space. Blue side on the wrong side. It's a one for one so far, but into a choke. BLG, don't walk there. Knight has himself a bit of, uh, of whatever you want to call it, magic. As Chris began, flashes this one. Zenith play, but Jackie Love has the space. Breathe with the ulti onto Tian. He's over the wall. Breathe flashes for it and the healing, but he can't get him in time. Pause that. Jackie Love hit him in waves. Chris goes on in. A quick lens, and he gets a double. Make it into a triple. This will be the triple with Doggo ulting. <laughs> it's enough. Wayward cleans the rest, and Top Esports burn the bodies of BLG. I gotta be honest, I feel like Top Esports are so lucky for how that one panned out. In the end, Jackie Love still goes down, but he has coming out with the majority of the kills. So you're gonna start pivoting over towards Dragon. Weiwei is up. I would expect him to not walk up into, you know, what he should expect is three members who are around that objective. But, man, massive fight for Top Esports. I think a bit of a slip up coming from the side of BLG. Again. So, so point. This game still not decided. But are we getting blood? Yes, we are. Lyric, here you go. I, I honestly can't believe that Jackie Love still tries to walk through this angle. He knows they have control of mid. He knows that they can put a ward down over the wall. So like you hit on the fight, he's not able to come down and get his damage off. And this could have been probably a much better fight for TS. But BLG still want to aggress. Instead of trying to turn to the dragon or, or turn to any sort of objective, they try to chase it onto Jackie Love. They instead get onto Tien. And then they start funneling in one by one. Yep. Knight able to try and keep the other two busy long enough for Jackie Love to find the first kill, long enough for Jackie Love to find the second kill. And then once Doggo oh. comes over, I mean, he knows he's probably dead. There's two members on the opposite side, so he just commits. But in the end, uh, Jackie Love able to finish him off as well. So Jackie Love met each challenger one by one, came out on top. I will say, Doggo, when he was already dead, as you just mentioned, oh, the Gale falls away from the Super Mega Death Rocket was amazing. The flash as well, like, team fighting for this man has been one of the strengths we've seen. And for Doggo, now a bit of praise here. That was a very good boy moment. As for BLG and Top Esports, it's around Baron now, Lyric, because Dragon's not up for 3 minutes 40. Breeze in the side lane with teleport just about to be available. Wayward doesn't have his own. Knight with his. So I'm going to question who matches for now as BLG are just waiting for a bait after clearing vision. A BLG waiting in the wings. Still breathe not around. He's actually making the full wrap around. And TS not even going to fall for it because they do have some vision in River and Topside. Got the Baron now. Missing things going down. Uh, Jackie Love is going to clear this pretty damn quick. BLG is a reposition. Still just hope that Top Esports walk into them. And, you know, Top Esports are very aware of this. You can see the positioning. Chris walks out first. And we're just A-ramming once again. 
Yeah, both teams looking for it for the side of top esports. I feel like for TS, you don't feel any pressure to try to walk in because you are the team that's on soul point, right? You can just wait for the next dragon to come up. Look, take your stand there. Look at that one for BLG. If they want to more aggressively force them in, they're going to have to do what they're doing now, which is outright start the Baron and make TS wonder. But it means that BLG was scattered to the wind for a quick moment. Mark, thinking about the engage. Chris wants the solar flare. comes down, lines up onto Tian, but that's nothing. Dreg's line onto Weiwei. Crescent Guard now used. Ulti after ulti. And that shockwave is just a click away. Knight helping get the inside track. The pillar, beautiful. And BLG are now just going to lose an inside turret for it. Yeah, T, uh, TS doing a nice job punishing them on that one. They can funnel up towards top side, clear out some of this vision, and take away that advantage that BLG were trying to force on them in terms of, hey, we have top, top side control. We don't know if we're doing this Baron or not, but for TS, to push out midway first and then look for that. Also want to highlight Chemcheck Putrefire picked up by Fofo. This is something we've seen be a little bit more standard rather than the Morellos. It's a little bit cheaper. Obviously, you're getting less ability power, but you're getting more ability pace. I don't think the mana regen uh, is too big of a deal in terms of you don't really have problems as Oriana with mana at this point in the game where you have loons, you have tears stacked up. The health from Morello wouldn't change much either, but, you know, cheap item, getting shields, empowering your, your other carries to have some Grievous Soons as well. Uh, quite nice coming out from him. Rest of the items coming through. We've got three and a half here on Rise uh, as Taran starts up. Now, Realm Warp was used, I believe, to try and bait BLG into cancelling their recalls. Wayward's going to see this one. He stands there, thinks about it for a moment. But for BLG, they're just kiting away. They're just leaving it for now. Weiwei gets low. Super Mega Death Rocket even challenges the status quo. And if Baron resets, that'll be time for Vision to be taken out. 55 seconds till Dragon Lyric. That's sole point. That'll lead to top esports getting the Hextech Dragon. And so far, top esports have a 50-50 win rate in this series with Soul. Yeah. We're going to see where that lands in terms of this game. We start to take a look, preparing for the fight at, at what's available, right? For the side of BLG, stopwatch and uh, Zanya's in mid, stopwatch on AD carry, stopwatch on jungle. You have the ability to buy a lot of time to bait certain members of TS in like Mark and try and burst them out while uh, those stasis do come off. On the opposite side, you have a stopwatch on your Jinx, which feels like the most impactful, right? Because both your other soul laners are quite beefy. And you pretty much have flashes up everywhere. Not pretty much, you do. Everyone has their flashes up, so Use it. tools to be able to reposition. Doggo, the one I want to watch again. Teleport burn to the mid lane. Five seconds till the Dragon Top Esports in the river once more. Knight is over the corner. And it's way, way the target with the pillar again being used off of cooldown. F cross burnt by Knight. They're taking it down. It's gone. Now they want to fight with the Dragon. So old Shockwave misses. It's flashed away from. And Jackie Love sitting pretty behind the counter. The rest of Top Esports Serving the drinks while Jackie Love, he's making all the profit. Doggo tries with his ulti as Fofo a bit missed time, a bit short. And Top Esports, this is their game to lose. Yeah, and Top Esports, I mean, they find the fight they need. Like you said, the shockwave flashed away from Fofo, not able to find any impact. With these death timers, Top Esports is going to be able to end. All right, run it through towards mid. 15 seconds on jungle, five on support. The minion wave thinned out a little bit, but they don't care. Knight's going to tank it up. It's a tank rise. There's enough damage here with 280 carries. One goes down. Solar Flare to buy time by Chris. The next Nexus turret available. Wayward hitting away. Nexus exposed. Chris dead. And on the verge of defeat, a game one for BLG turns into a reverse sweep by the top esports. I love how TS have adopted this ARAM play style and it is still able to work out for them. I mean... Hell, they're trudging along now on their fifth series win in a row. They are matched with the whole other kerfuffle of teams that's at seven wins. And now they're actually in the conversation for a team who, again, is making their way towards the, the buys for uh, the, the double 